don't care that it sees the thing. What does it see? That. The top of the computer screen? Yeah, as long as it's not focused on that. That's all. There. I moved it away a little bit. Look. Oh, almost made it. <laughs> it's terrible. Let's see here. Did I go too far? Nope. We're there. Woohoo. All right, everybody. We are live for Yawa episode 69. <laughs> For all the other immature people in the room. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. But uh, a couple cool things that we've got to talk about this evening. First and foremost, we want to hear the check-ins, all right, folks? We've got uh, a couple of them coming already. Some people were here early, checked in. Oklahoma. Yeah, I dig that. What else we got? We got to make that bigger. California. Mm -hmm. Zinga. Georgia. Bazinga. Okay. Name that movie reference. Well, I guess it's a TV series. It's going to make it too easy for y'all. Not like there's a million TV episodes out there. Think about it. Think about it for just a second. Sorry, folks. We're we're just fiddle fart farting around here. All right, we got Georgia, we got Minnesota, we got California, Massachusetts, Western Kansas, Maine. Heck yeah, Jefferson. Well, John. Hey, we're gonna see you this weekend. Yeah, absolutely, we are. Speaking of this weekend, I just wanted to say we have a couple spots still available. Um, actually, quite a few because it was more of a last minute thing in the grand scheme of scheduling. We set up a training seminar for this weekend that's all about retrieving. Uh, we're going to be doing marking drills, lining drills, and then specifically talking about all of the steps in the formal retrieving process. You get to bring your dog as well as you get to watch. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, six dogs throughout, scattered throughout the process. And I will show you them as well as help work with your dogs, as well as we're going to do a bunch of cool marking drills, lots of fun stuff until it gets too hot. Then we'll go have dinner. You get, to, you get to put up with me for an entire day. Uh, Cat will bebop in and out. But this is this is my show, folks. Come on. What Re are we talking about? Retrieving stuff is kind of his deal. Yeah, and I'm not even good at it. So if that tells you, no, nah, I'm just teasing. I'm pretty good at it. So um, then we've got that this weekend. You can still sign up. It's a two-day event, Saturday, Sunday. It will be most of the morning and early afternoon. We have a beautiful air-conditioned facility, so we'll do some midday afternoon stuff where we can stay cool, and in the morning, we'll work our butts outside till we start dripping sweat from every place we're not supposed to, and Big Bang Theory was already taken. Wham! Too easy for y'all, and uh, yes, yeah, so this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, if you, I know it's last minute, but if you uh, are in the area, sign up. Standingstonesupply.com. You can purchase your spot for you and your dog. And an observer. Just you. Or, or you and two dogs. Or just you and your wife and your kids and no dogs. Or any combination of, combinations. of the above. Now, um, and if this seminar is a little too last minute for you. Or you don't really need help with the retrieving aspect uh, side of things. Two, we have two, other two others scheduled um, that you can sign up for. One in August. One in September. So, We've got uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Georgia, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Michigan, Bama, Bama, baby, South Carolina, Saskatchewan, Atlanta, California, New Zealand, Australia. Australia. Whoop whoop. Uh, are you hunting the old what 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 is Australia? It's uh, um, stubble quail. Are you hunting stubble quail there, Australia? Southern California, uh, Friendswood, Tejas. I don't really. Is that Texas? Like, is that Texas, a typo? Texas, Minnesota, Louisiana, Iowa. In that Louisiana traffic. Hey, you better be listening. I don't care. I bumper think, to bumper. I think that might be L.A. traffic. <laughs> I got you on that one. Okay, sure. Maybe Los Angeles traffic. That would make sense, too. Then just all of Louisiana traffic. Well, Louisiana traffic's bad, too. Have you ever been there? Yes. Okay. 
And it wasn't that bad. I bet it's Los Angeles. That makes more sense. Iowa, and then Pennsylvania, Missouri, Montana, Missouri. This is a, a very exciting, eclectic collection of the United States we have representing Pittsburgh, and Bama not again. Not just the U.S., but there's some other countries. Canada people here, and Iowa, Australia, New, New Zealand, Jersey, Texas, Southern Minnesota, Virginia, Virginia Ohio, Ohio, Kentucky. Checking in for the first time. Heck yeah. Thanks for joining us. We know you're a subscriber because I believe I have that feature turned on. Wouldn't want to piss off Kelly, though, so who knows? <laughs> the UK, 1030 in the morning in Australia. Morning to you. Uh, did you get your car in the car park? Hey, Alabama, uh, Las Vegas, Wisconsin again. Ethan, what's your mile time? Okay, that's a great question. It's not that good. Um, <laughs> How Kat, many miles is he running? I mean, come on. Uh, let's see. We got more Australia. Uh, we got it. Just kidding. LOL. So, Cal, Ethan, are you recording? I hit the red button. Thank you. I, I appreciate you checking in, though, 100%, because there's going to be another time where I'm going to be like, whoops. New Jersey, Ontario. Folks, we've got Hawaii. California. We have been to Alabama. We've got some good friends down there that we yeah. have gone down and beached it with them a few times. Been so. too long, but we're planning on going back. Yes. Between COVID and babies, we've been off our annual Bama trips. So. Ontario, California, North Dakota, New Mexico, Indiana, and thanks, Kat. I'm in the house. That's Kelly. We appreciate you. And uh, thanks for replying to DM last week. We don't know where you're from, Max Stasio, but he we're happy to do He messaged on it. Instagram. I, I'm pretty sure. You're right. I do a Minnesota, lot of messages, Kansas, so. Chicago. All right, folks. We are pretty up much and checked in. We're pretty much checked in. And what? And, uh, okay, Mama's got a drink tonight, a so new she's drink. excited I about to this. Ex I wanted to share my new drinks do that it. I found. So. I've been loving the Corona Refrescas, and then I saw that they have these Corona Hard Seltzers Lemonadas. I'm not a huge hard seltzer fan. They kind of are like, I don't know, not my thing. But the Refrescas get a little too sweet after a while. I know, who, who has too sweet? But these are made with a real splash of lemon and not lime too juice. Sweet, not too sweet. Yeah, just, just right. right. And that's what these are. They are just a hint of sweet. So they've got a little more flavor than the um, refreshed or than the seltzers, but not so much sweet that they're like rot your guts out by the end of the day. <laughs> so no watermelon no gut rot. lemonada from Corona. Okay, so I have a very special and not special all at the same time bourbon, okay? So the not special portion of it is, it's Buffalo Trace. I've talked about this one before. It is one of my favorite, and yep, you all saw that right there. What does that little insignia mean? It says, single barrel, hand selected by Social Southern Table and Bar. All right, these are some clients that actually are from L.A., Louisiana. Yep. And uh, he owns uh, uh, one or two restaurant bars, something, something, a few. I don't know the exact number, but it's social. He gave us a couple t-shirts and then actually gave us, uh, me specifically, a few of these specific selected. Basically, it's called a barrel selection. So you get to taste a few barrels. Most of the time, we've talked all about this a little bit before, there's like a small batch, right? You take several barrels, you mix them together, and you say... This kind of tastes like Buffalo Trace. Um, well, this specific one came all from the same barrel, and they essentially said, eh, we like bourbon. So we bought an entire barrel, and then we get to slap our sticker on the fact that we said that's the one we like better than the selection that they got to pick from, which is kind of a cool thing. I would absolutely love to be able to do this myself. I'm on the list. But the thing is, I won't be able to do much with it because I can't send them to anybody. We wanted to be able to give them, my thought, we, I keep saying we, I wanted to be able to give them to folks as a, this is the guy with the pink bun, pink buns and gun, a uh, single barrel select and, uh, <laughs> Jesus. well, you know, 
So, um, <clears throat> and the biggest thing that I'm running into a roadblock, I'm trying to figure it out. If anybody out there knows how I can legally, keywords here, legally ship you all bourbon for free, um, I'm not trying to sell, just trying to give away these bottles that would be barrel selected by yours truly. So that's what this is. We're going to try it. I love Buffalo Trace. We're going to see what this has different from the regulars. And since he knows he loves Buffalo Trace so much, it's like a two finger pour kind of night. Eh, why Half not? the bottle. No, just kidding. Well, these are little, 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 little baby bottles. It's just a, I think it's a pint. Is that what it is? Don't see ounces on here. Mm. I don't know either. Mm. It's smaller than a fifth. I can tell you that much. Okay. Well, sip it. Mm, it smells like bourbon. I got to give it a second. I just opened it. You got to let that sucker breathe. Mm. Wake up. I know nothing about. Smell the French fries. Okay, so couple things. Yep. Yeah. So no ads, folks, because ads are stupid, and we appreciate while you, you guys are live. Yeah, while you're live, if you're watching this not live, there's ads. Sorry. Um, and then the last but not least, this is a kind of a big thing that we are changing. All right. So you guys have stuck through us changing things lots and lots on you. Yeah, we try lots and find and things lots. that end up um, working for everyone. That's, that's the key here, working for everyone. And right now, we've heard from several people, how do you do it? You guys do so much. You've got the kids. You've got the stuff. You've got the videos. You've got the blah, 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 blah. And you're still doing all these things. Well, we've come to the point where we've decided that live Yawa has to take a slight step back. Not a complete step, but a slight step back. And what we're going to end up doing is doing a live Yawa one time per month. Okay? Now, because it's only one time per month and you only get to spend time with us once, once a, month. a month live, we're going to do some extra super special stuff. And we're going to include giveaways on every single Yawa. We did a few of those and we kind of gotten away from it. And we want to do it every single month. We'll be giving away bigger things. Things like an e-collar or a training package that equates to similar to value of an e-collar or training platform or any of the things yeah. that we use all of the stuff it's going to be up there oh oh short pour so you don't appear to be a lush well i uh, appear to be what i am but we'll come up and we've got a little bit of time to plan all the details out we discussed this uh live yawa <laughs> once a month type of thing this week because yes yeah two little boys having to rely on grandma every wednesday night it takes away from the family time yeah. folks and that's what we are trying to prevent cutting into the family time so bigger things though the once a month we'll do the full hour maybe hour and a half depending on what usually our yawa is stretching to an hour and a half so it's probably going to be at least that it probably will so it's it's not a hard set thing but there will be the the giveaways we'll do lots of questions because it won't happen as often we'll probably put more emphasis on the questions announcements questions giveaway that's what the plan is going to be um and then and then we are rolling back into having more time during the day to get some videos shot for y'all. So we are getting, trying, really trying to get to three videos a week that don't include the Yawa stuff so that we can keep the content rolling and keep you guys satisfied for training videos and informational videos that we put out there because we are at 96 point three thousand subscribers guys which is awesome yeah so three and a half away about a month ish on our subscriber change average so uh we should be rolling right into that how hundred thousand subscribers in a month and One we can month, celebrate folks. that with you guys live on yawa so our goal is to do it approximately around the first week of the month on Wednesdays. That's not always going to work, but we're going to utilize our social platforms to announce. So it'll be like, hey, remember, Yawa is on this night. 
It will be involving this, and we will be giving away these things. Check it out. And we'll do those posts a couple times a week or once a week it, just to, to make it not be completely ridiculous, but keep you updated in stories and whatever to say. These things are going to be there and... So that we don't surprise you guys saying... And you can plan around it. Hey, you know, it's a one a month guess thing. what? Tomorrow's live, y'all. Well, I hope you don't have plans. Mm-hmm. No, we'll try and prepare you guys. Okay, so this is definitely different than the straight small batch buffalo trays. Different? In a oh. good way. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm trying to... It's got just a hint. I think part of it is it's a little more... Because I just opened this bottle, where a majority of the bottles that I have, I'm a, I'm unless I'm not planning on drinking it, I'm a big buy it, crack it, close it kind of deal because they mellow a little bit once they've been opened and the seal is broken. A little bit of the alcohol will evaporate, and then the uh, bourbon mellows. Right, it's easier to drink. My whole goal is not reaching the highest octane drink possible. It's to be able to enjoy it. So when it mellows a little bit, it's just. And we're talking minimal, but it's enough to be able to recognize it. So it's good. It's good, good, good. So one other, not as exciting announcement, but something that people oh, have it's been... exciting. Do you even know what I'm going to say? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Something that people have been asking about for a I wrote it down while, right and we are busy people, so it's taken us a while to finally get around to it. But we have our new... Yes, <laughs> med kits on the Standing Stone Supply website. So you can check them out. They are the full complete kits, things that we use and recommend, things that Dr. Peter recommends. Um, and yeah, we put this together with, with our his, buddy who happens to be a veterinarian. Yep, yeah, with his recommendations um, and suggestions. And then we also have refill kits available so you don't have to buy the whole kit when you use some of the things out of it. Um, you can refill for the pri- for the next season, basically. So check that out if you guys are interested. Um, and then I think that's it. Is there anything else that we talked about that we wanted to talk about that we haven't talked about? <laughs> that was good. That was like a me kind of I know, right? I'm I gonna liked roll. it. I liked it. So, uh, no, I think that's about it. What we are going to be moving into now is the discussion of rarer breeds. And what this I would like to do... You just need to be left-handed, I think, for the time being. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know how to do it any different because it does. When we sit this close together and we do this. It's like, get out of my way. What we need is um, some extra microphones that uh, and extra cameras so we can sit opposite sides of the table of each other. And then we'll just pretend. We'll put them side by side so we're pretending like we're together. It's a med kit for just dogs. I mean, you could. Um, Ethan stapled his arm up before, so go ahead and use it for yourself as well. Yeah, I'll shoot another video to show the med kit in its entirety. I think probably would be a good idea. But the, yes, it, it has a lot of first aid stuff just in general. I mean, the stuff crosses, a, it's about the same for people and dogs. So we've got things like a uh, vet bond, which would be essentially super glue for if you have a small cut or something that needs super glued, there are dog nail trimmers and there are hemostats and tweezers. Those things are both beneficial for people. Um, stapler, which if you cut something and you need it stapled, you could do that. Uh, most of the time, we're going to be able to get. Yeah. We're going to be able to get to unless we're actively dying, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, I gutted myself. Let's staple that sucker shut. Um, no, that's when you take all the gauze that's in the package, you shove you it in the wound, it. and you take the vet wrap, and you wrap it really tight, and you get your butt to the, I was yeah. going to say the vet, but the doctor, If the a ER. vet's closer, I mean, go for it. You might be, just depends on where you're at, okay? So, um, but there's also eye flush and chlorhexidine for cleaning Antibiotic wounds, ointment. Peroxide, uh, skunk off, and that could help you out too. There's um, tough foot, which helps with pad soreness or other issues. Um, Styptic powder for clotting. There is nail trimmers for dogs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There are muzzles for dogs. And the reason that we throw muzzles in there, which is something that people probably look at and go, 
What? What do we need a muzzle for? Well, if your dog gets seriously injured and you are trying to help them, they may lash out at you because you're causing more pain and they're confused at the pain. And so to keep them safe, us safe, putting a muzzle on them so that you can help them would be important. So things like that. um, But it's a really pretty much all inclusive med kit. The only thing that is not included is prescription type medications that you can only get from your veterinarian. So it's a pretty, pretty good, uh, awesome product that we finally got onto the website. Um, the only thing you didn't mention was Benadryl, I think. Maybe you said Benadryl. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, there's probiotics, a lot of stuff. pill yeah. pockets. There's a lot more Standing on there. Standingstonesupply.com. Search med kit. It's in all of the categories because it works for the home and the hunt and training and everything. So. Yeah. But now it's time to talk about rare hunting breeds. And we got this question, we asked for some suggestions for topics, and people were messaging us, answering the questions, um, the question little question thingy on the story, and there were a lot of people that repeated the similar feel of, let's talk about different types of breeds, let's talk about rare breeds, let's talk about the differences between this breed and this breed. So we're like, let's wrap that all into kind of one general topic, and... um, discuss that then this evening so we did a little bit of um looking to see if i could come up with some that we didn't already know or didn't have specific interactions with and my favorite i'm going to throw this one out there my favorite of our adventure which i have actually heard of them but i've never to my knowledge met one in person i feel like i did but i'm not it's the the Brock de Bourbonnais. Bourbonnais. Yeah, because they they have bourbon in them. And essentially, that's a Bourbonnais pointer, which I kind of assumed they were French-ish, and I'm, maybe Bourbonnais is near France. I don't know, but Bourbonnais is where the pointers are from. So Brock, which is pointer of France de Bourbonnais. So of Bourbonnais of France, which is uh, Brock de Francais. Brock Francais. Brock Just Brock Francais. Francais. Okay. So, my favorite, Brock de Bourbonnais, because it had bourbon in the name. Um, they uh, look like pointers with short tails, actually. Mm-hmm. And really short, like shorter than, they, they bob them to very short. Nubbins. Nubbins, like uh, wee little guys. But we actually have had the opportunity to work with a couple of the rarer breeds that are in the United States, uh, as well as through NAVDA, the North American Versatile Hunting Dog Association. I've had the opportunity to see dogs run through these versatile tests um, that fall into some of these rare breed categories. And when we're talking about rare breeds, we're not talking about German short hairs or German wire hair pointers or wire hair pointing griffons. Those are pretty popular versatile or dogs. Or doodles. Those aren't rare breeds. No, those are kind of um, what we call designer breeds, if you will. Um, but oh, somebody used the word beep, and so it, YouTube tried to block your comment. It censored you. I let censored. you through. I let you um, through. But the dogs that are considered rare are dogs that there are a few hundred to maybe only a thousand within the U.S. Um, so when you think about all... The dogs uh, that are there. I want to take just a little poll, and that's where I started, and then we got distracted. Me, you know. Um, Squirrel. What breeds are we working with here? It says that there are 100 and, 120, 100 and, well, it was 101. There. 101 current viewers. viewers. Okay, so we should be able to see yeah. close to 100 folks comment in here what breeds they are. Okay. Would what breeds those do you also have? be known as French Ford? Not the Brock de Bourbonnais, but Brock Francais are French pointers. Yeah. So what breed do you have? Do you fall into the quote unquote rare breed category uh, or at least rare breed in the United States? That's what we're going with. So throw up some uh, of your breeds here and we'll start looking at them. But 
we specifically have worked with Brock Francais in the kennel. We've um, worked with Brocco Italianos at the kennel here. Uh, I've watched um, Benoni Italianos. I've worked with... um, I looked at that. What? Spanones. Spanones, yeah. Or Spanoni Spanoni Italiani. Italiani. Yeah, we were looking up some specifics, um, pronunciations. Um, (laughs) Matt's here. He says, I got short hairs at your facility right now. Yes, you do. And they're doing a great job. (laughs) That's right. Um, What other breeds have we worked with that would be kind of on that rare breed spectrum? That we've specifically worked with? Or seen at tests. Ah, poodle pointers. Um, Um, You... Poodle pointers are becoming less in the more rare popular. Breed I've seen them. Yeah. They've been around for a while, but they're not quite as popular. Wire-haired pointing griffons are not quite as popular, but are becoming drastically more popular. Uh, the other one that I was going to say, you were at a Navda event and got to judge several dogs that were litter mates, and they were. According to the folks there, and I don't have this as the gospel, but I believe, were they Picardi, were they called Picardi Spaniels? Spaniels typically would be, go hand in hand with a dog that's a flushing dog, not a versatile breed, but were they Picardi Spaniels? Uh, yeah, they were Picardi Spaniel. Picardi Spaniel, and according to the folks that were there, um, Kat got the opportunity to judge 48% of the Picardi Spaniels in the United States that day. Yeah, that is kind of crazy when you think about it. I think I saw three of them. Yeah, three or four or something like that. I mean, they were talking less than 10 or less than 13, or it was like, it was it was 100% it was less than 15, and it was just teens and s- in the United States. And maybe those were in the United States that were registered with NAVDA. I mean, Could be. some yeah. of these stats can be a little skewed based on where we're pulling the registration information from. But um, has anyone ever seen a German long hair? I have. I have trained one. Yeah. One. Yep. Uh, I'm just trying to think of some Did of the... Did you train one? You just agreed with me like you trained one. No, I said, yeah, you trained one. That was ah, the one I've seen. Yeah, is it? The one up in Minnesota. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the solid liver one. Yeah, she was pretty. Very pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, and it for like a quarter of a second made me think, I should get one of these because they're pretty. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the other... Breeds. Monsterlanders are less common, not extremely uncommon. What else have we got through here? Um, not rare. I have a short hair. Oh, kind of. A, whoa, 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 whoa. We've got a lot here. I was missing these. Sorry, y'all. Oh, yeah, lots. Let's go back. Go back, go back. Okay. Keep, Keep going. going. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, French Borders. DKs. DKs. Okay, so DKs are, in our opinion, as much a different breed as a wire hair is from a short hair, okay? But uh, a DK being a different breed from a short, short hair. hair. They do get bred interchangeably, but they are drastically different in the way that they train and work and their brains work. Not bad, just different. different. GSP, uh, poodle pointer, wire haired pointing Griffon, no, WGP. Maybe that's WPG, wire-haired. Pointing Griffon. Pointing Griffon, I think. Um, Deutsch Cruzar. Yeah, DK, baby. Lab. American. Scott Brit- Clark, where, left field with the lab. Um, I have an American <laughs> We Brittany. know your lab. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. American Brittany, future owner of a Standing Stone GSP. Perfect. Excellent. Can't pronounce this one. Espanol Breton, French Brittany. Ah, that's how that's uh, spelled, maybe. <laughs> Poodle Pointer, Deutsch Cruzar, Perdig, yeah, De Bergois, I don't know. That's probably a rare breed. GSP, <laughs> Boykin Spaniel, Lab. Yeah, yeah, Boykins aren't as popular, a little more popular. Bracco, Bracco. I'm assuming Italiano, English Field Lab, a bred in s- Scotland. Scottish Lab. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, GSP. Times two. Times Not two. rare. Not rare. <laughs> Gordon, Gordon Satter. Satter. Wire-haired Pony Griffon. Times three. Be Ian. And soon a short hair. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there, Ian. <laughs> Vishla Ridgeback. You, you got to admit, though, you got to handle a short hair, like a Cadillac of short hairs, but you got to handle one, and it felt good. <laughs> I know that it did. Ridgeback. Uh, GSP Lab I've Mix. Seen, That's seen, heard, worked with a lot of Ridgebacks. Uh, Tekel. I don't know what a Tekel what is. What is a Tekel? Uh-uh. Let me look that up. Poodle Pointer, Field Lab, Drothheart, um, Boykin Spaniel. Not your dog, but you've worked with them. Black Lab and a German Wire Hair Pointer. GSP. Um, it's a Badger Hound. Dang. Tekel. That's cool. Munsterlander, GSP. Black and white, German wire hair pointer. They kind of look like Dosh hounds, but longer hair longer. and more badass. <laughs> Picardi Spaniel. Hey, 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 there's one of those Picardi Spaniel people. And oh, then it jumped. Yeah. It just jumped. Don't do that to me. Comments. Bloodhound. Bourgois pointer, a Spanish pointer. Drink to that. How do I do that? How do I undo that? Oh, they took it away. Not yeah, They, they took it away. Not message. YouTube took it away. Yep, Picardi Spaniel. There's our Picardi Spaniel person. Or maybe you don't have one, but you're saying Picardi Spaniel. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I would love to know if someone has one. Yeah. Um, bloodhounds. And then we have France Europe, the term Spaniel referring to the coat. Ah. Whereas in the United States, the term Spaniel refers to how they work. Yeah, usually flush. Hey, thank you for the the I love the tip lessons. Bed. I love learning new things. Um, There's a lot of monsters at the event. Yeah, if you get them in like spurts, because a lot of times like a, a litter will go to a test or something. Mm -hmm. American Brittany, GSP, and a Espanol Breton. Mm -hmm. Gordon. Um, it keeps jumping on me. El Hugh Pointer. Yep. Vishla Llewellyn Setter. Llewellyn Setter. I actually trained the first female Llewellyn Setter to ever be titled AKC Master Hunter. Great Dane. Brock Francais. Remy. Oh, yeah. Hey, Kyle. And we worked with your Brock Francais Diesel, too. Mm -hmm. Who I lovingly like to refer to as Diesel, since, you know, she is French and she's a she. And then you got to sing a song about her. Diesel, my gal. I'm not Point singing. Point the birds and hunt the fields well. <laughs> it's going to be a new single? Nah, that was it. A mix, a GSP, two French Spaniels, a Drothar, a Drenz Pachershond. Since I can't pronounce it, it's rare. I'm <laughs> just and saying. Check it off in the box. We can't say it, and we don't know it. <laughs> so, uh, <it's laughs> um, but all in all, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun to be able to see each of these individual breeds. Now, the biggest thing that we can throw out for all of them, and this is something that I preach, borderline preach, um, is that there are good dogs in every single breed, hands down, one hundred percent. Good dogs in every single breed. Now, when you start working with these breeds that have fewer and far between as far as numbers go, it can be more difficult or easier, depending on how you're looking at it, to find quality dogs within that breed. If you are going through the paces of what we have explained, find a breeder that meets your goals and does the things and does all of the stuff that fits you and you talk to them, no matter what breed they're in, you're going to find the right dog for you. But if you go the opposite route and you go, I have to have a Dritzen Pachenhound, and you find one on Facebook Marketplace 12 and a half miles from your house, the likelihood that that dog is going to do exceptional in what you want it to do is drastically lower. So take the time. Put in the effort and energy into looking for the right breeder, and that ultimately will make finding the right dog for you much yeah. easier. And, and don't just get hung up on saying, I really want to have a 
Rocco Italiano because... I'm a perfect example of that. Because it's just... Perfect. <laughs> it's just this out there rare breed and it'll be so cool. Well, if that breeds temperament and personality overall isn't really a good fit for you, even if you find a breeder that's breeding, you know, really high quality Broncos, they still aren't going to be the best dog for you. You know, um, just like if you, you know, are looking for a specific dog for a specific task, finding a breed that's going to fit that instead of trying to cram a breed into those <laughs> Goals so, is important. For me, I went into I want to get a bird dog and like studied Weimariners. Mm -hmm. It was it. That was it for me. My grandpa had one. I had to have They're one. They're so pretty. They're so cool. I the love the coats. Ghosts. Love everything about them. I was like, Weimariners. And then I got recommended to look into a few different things and one specifically was short hairs and then did a little more research and then got to go interact with them as well as other breeds and went short hair is uh, more the direction for me and still to this day I wouldn't waver from that and a lot of times folks ask us why do you GSP right well there's a lot of things but ultimately when it comes down to it I've gotten to work with lots and good from every breed and personality, specific hunting ability, desire to work. All of the things cater more toward what I specifically am looking for. That doesn't mean that short hairs are right for you. It does mean that they are right for me. I like that. FGR JK13. You can't cram a breed into your lifestyle. And that is exactly what I was trying to say. So, you can't just say, this would be a really cool breed, but it doesn't fit what I'm looking for at all. But I still have to have it because it's a cool breed. That isn't going to do the dog justice. You're ultimately probably not going to be happy with the situation. Malinois. Yeah, for example. I mean, it doesn't have to just be hunting dogs we're talking about, but working mm -hmm. breeds, you know, a lot of people think, oh, that would be so cool. Those dogs are driven. Those dogs driven. need a job. And if that's not harnessed, it can be dangerous. Um, not just a bad fit for your family. So, um, but like Ethan was saying, GSPs aren't always for everyone. Um, they are for us. But again, like we were saying, there's good dogs and bad dogs in every breed. So finding the right breeder is really important because I was just going to say <laughs> this. You were saying that we've, you know, worked with lots of different breeds and we worked with good ones from every category, but we've also worked with bad ones and we've worked with some bad short hairs. I mean, oh, we've worked with some short hairs yeah. that you're like, oh my gosh, if that was if literally was where the we pool started to pull from, so I, I wouldn't have a GSP. a long time ago. Yeah. For so, sure. I mean, really what it comes down to, though, is when you start looking at things, you've got to find what fits you. And I wanted to talk about a few things that we've specifically seen with um, some of those individual breeds. Like, for example, we have worked with quite a few Rock Francais, and that is something that you have specifically said. If I could change breeds, I would go that direction. Explain to us why. I really like the Brock, and again, we're pulling from a pretty small pool. I think I've worked with one, two, three, four, five, six, s under ten. Under, under 10, ten, and they're all exactly the same. So that doesn't again count as a. It's a pretty small pool. It's You've made a pretty good understanding of what they are uh -huh. in that a That's small the words group. I was looking yeah. for. I got stuck, but they have a lot of the same abilities as short hairs. Uh, you know, nice pointing dogs. I'm just gonna make faces at you while you're talking. And I'm gonna have to not look at you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um same abilities as short hairs, pointing breeds, but they are typically a little bit smaller, which I don't hate a smaller dog. Makes it nice to cuddle on the couch with and they are also very sweet personalities. They have a lot of personality sma smashed into, packed into a small package. I don't um, think we've they had one yet that doesn't talk. I was going to say that. <laughs> they love to talk, and it's so cute. They a woo at you, and they get so excited, and it's the cutest little vocalization. Um, and if you like that kind of thing, for you. <laughs> Not for him, but <laughs> I think it's adorable, and I love it. Um, 
as well as they are, people will say this about some breeds a lot of times, um, for example, Brock Francais or Wire Hair Pointing Griffons, like, oh, they're, I've heard they're a softer dog, you know, and, and they, you know, aren't going to take to training the same way. How do you train differently so that you don't, you know, break these soft dogs? And Ethan and I have this understanding that we're not going to take a dog that's a breed that should be considered soft and handle them with kid gloves and give them special exceptions. We're going to just treat them like a real dog. And we are going to always, with whatever dog we're training and working with, use the lowest amount of pressure, if you will, necessary to get the goal, whether we're working with a soft dog, quote unquote, or a short hair. We've got short hairs that are soft dogs. We've got short hairs that are hard as nails, and I'm not going... And typically that soft or hard as nails um, directly correlates to like collar pressure. How much collar right. do they take, right? So the number is arbitrary. We're going to use the lowest level the dog responds to, whether that's one or 20. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's finding what their threshold is and what they're going to be able to feel and respond to without overdoing. And not making excuses for the dog either and be like, oh, well, they're a softer dog, so they shouldn't be able to do what I'm asking them. Mm -hmm. No, they've no, no, no. been trained. They have a full understanding. And if we give them that excuse, they're going to take it because all of these dogs are intelligent. And if they think that they can get out of something by putting on a show or trying to convince you that they are a soft dog, um, then that's when you're going to have a dog that can't really be trained. Now, on the flip side, there are a handful of others that fall into the I also really like Bracco Italianos. Quigley. <laughs> so it I love Quigley. Italian pointers. And you don't like Bracco Italianos. You like Quigley. That's what I just said. That's it, though. I would have one of his puppies. But Quigley. So, Cat likes Quigley, which Quigley is a, probably the closest thing to a short hair Bracco Italianos have ever seen, but looks like a hound dog, a.k.a. the short hair crossed with the... I'm not saying there's anything that happened there. Quigley is an awesome dog, and he falls into our realm for wants of a dog, but looks like and is a Bracco Italiano, which the Bracco Italiano world, so I'm told, don't really like Quigley. So... There is that, but Quigley is a badass, so, so there's, there's that. that. Um, but we had somebody pop in here like, I want a slow, close working dog. Spanones are, fall into that category. And then also s some to most wire-haired pointing Griffons are closer working, a little bit slower working. Um, not all of them, but most. Um, I'm thinking of. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy is the opposite. Yeah, yeah Rudy is as close to it. I mean, the short hair is the other thing. I mean, Rudy's as close to a short hair as a wire haired pointing Griffon has ever been, but still looks like a wire haired pointing Griffon. There's a WPG. lot of words there. WPG. So, um, what are those uh, we've got? And Bracco Italianos are like the, um, on average, they would be the, the short haired version of the way they look as a Spanone Italiano. You've got like wire hair, short hair, Spanone, Bracco. Um, and for the most part, they're pretty close working, a little bit slower moving, unless you're talking about quickly. So, um, And then I would say, as far as other breeds go, most of them are designed to work a little faster, move a little Work a little harder, move a little bigger, all the things. Yeah, so we can make some generalizations about mm -hmm. each of the breeds. But again, you're going to get both ends of the spectrum within a breed. So breeders breed for specific things, even in short hairs. So we breed for a specific range. We like dogs that work not close underfoot necessarily, but aren't out there a quarter of a mile to a mile distant. Okay. So but you can get short hairs like that, just like we were talking about the... Griffons, you can get both ends of the spectrum. So, yep. again, it sounds like a cop-out. to your breeder. But talk to your breeder and say, yep. hey, what kind of range do your dogs usually fall into when they're hunting? 
open-ended questions. Get the real deal. Don't say, I'm looking for a dog that hunts about 40 yards. Oh, yeah, all my dogs will hunt in that range. Eh, let's see what they have to say first before feeding them that information. That is a good way to do it. Now, I will say in the specific side of that, I want to know from people. I, I push the opposite side of that from the breeder aspect. I want to know from people what they're looking for. But I don't say, oh, yeah, our dogs do that. I say yeah, our dogs aren't the right fit for you, or it sounds like our dogs are the right fit for you because we have a 100% guarantee with all the things we're doing. And that is, I want to make sure that that dog is the right fit for your family. And if they're not, I write in our contract that we have the first opportunity to buy that dog back so that we can make sure that it goes to the right place if it, for whatever reason, doesn't fit your family. Hadn't happened very often, but it has happened a couple times over the last decade. And it's one of those things that it's important to us. Now, the other side of it, Kat kind of mentioned, this doesn't have anything to do with rare breeds. It just has everything to do with breeds in general. And short hairs being a prime example of that. You have some pretty opposite extremes that move within that. You have like the versatile realm. You have the field trial realm. You have the show realm, which is you know, structure and whatever, but they're different personalities. They're built different. They move different. They think different. All the things are different. Now, then you have some dual champions that kind of fit this somehow halfway between her, but I think a majority of the duels fit more this direction toward the field aspect of things, but then, you know, and I'm not picking, okay, but get shown in the right environment for field dogs, which helps them to excel. It is a competition. It is based on the competition, right? So and if you show up. And there are judges that have different eyes. things they look for, that they like to look for. A thousand percent. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And if you talk to anybody in that world or the uh, field trial world or the AKC hunt test world, or the NAVDA world, or any of the worlds, there are people, because there is such a thing as human error, that have a predisposition of exactly what it is, and they try and apply the rules as best as possible, but it's still shaded their direction. I'm a judge. She's a judge. We do our best to follow the rules and set the, the, the standard so it's the same for every dog, but it's not, okay? There are little things here and there. Now, all I was getting at with that is there is a vast variety. Now, when you deal with a breed like short hairs, much larger variety. When you breed with um, any of these more rare breeds, you're going to get a pretty specific set of things um, across the board. It, it really is. Unless you're just picking, again, like I said, from Facebook Marketplace or the newspaper or the whatever you're going to a quality breeder that has the breed standard in mind when they're doing that, and you talk to them about your goals and they all fit, you're going to get pretty damn close to what you're looking for. Somebody asked a question related to range um, that I wanted to kind of hit on. Mm -hmm. Do dogs get range from their parents, or is it how they are raised and trained from Xander Newcomb? Both. Um, both, but definitely genetics play a really big role Um I would, Everything is genetic. Yeah, I would say that um, you can pull a dog in a little bit that has a little bit bigger range, but you're always going to kind of have to have that thumb on the button to remind them, remind them, remind them. And then those closer working dogs that are naturally more close working because of their parents, um, it's going to take a lot to push them out. Potentially another dog that they feel that competition to work out with, um, just constantly pushing them off of a four-wheeler, getting them to run bigger. But again, dogs are going to really want to settle into their natural range. And so it's going to take a lot more training, conditioning, and handling to keep them in a range that they're not as naturally comfortable in. That's a key point that she said there. Okay, so we hear fairly regularly, oh, I can always bring them back in, but I can't push them out. I don't believe that that is 100% the case. I believe that you can push them out as much as you can bring them back in. But ultimately, you need to find that dog that fits the range, which is going to be the easiest for you to deal with on a regular basis. Takes the least amount of management, development, or anything else. I Just a little quick story because we love stories, and then we'll probably wrap this up and get into some questions. But, Heck yeah. Uh, so Yukonuba was out 
not last week, the week before. Two to, weeks before that. They were here recently-ish. And we were shooting some videos. And it was really fun because we took Muddy and Grit out for part of that. And they wanted to get some drone footage and some other stuff. And basically, we were just taking the girls for a walk around the field. Uh, we hadn't planted any birds. We were just walking the field. If they found a residual bird, great. Um, but we were just out there to have a good time. And Ethan and I were just chatting away. The girls aren't on e-callers. We're just running them. And mm -hmm. it was so enjoyable because I got to the end of the field with him and I looked at him and I'm like, that was really nice. Didn't have to holler at my dog. Didn't have to worry where were they at because they were hunting cooperatively in front of us at a nice range. And they were there at the end of the field when we got to the end. It wasn't like, ah, where'd Muddy go? Where'd Grit go? Well, we weren't paying enough attention and we lost them. No, they just were hunting with us right where they were supposed to be. And sure, they're both master hunters, well-trained dogs, but they have been masters for a couple of years now. Grit's been a master for like four years. Muddy's been a master for like three years, two years, somewhere in there. So it's been a while since they've had that intense of, you know, training and titling, but that's them. They were just there because that's what they are. 100%. 100%. Story over. It was a good story. The And then uh, I found $5. That made the story better. <laughs> so, I I mean, really, what it comes down to is um, this, this whole thing comes full circle into me talking about how amazing muddy puppies are. <laughs> it just is... It just is the fact of the matter, folks. If you are looking for short hair and you don't have your name down on a muddy litter, you are missing out on what is to be the greatest thing that has ever reached the short hair world in what we're trying to produce. <laughs> Ethan loves muddy. And did you notice he's all high on muddy? Well, she's out of vex, so that kind of tells you something. Apple doesn't fall far from the peach tree. Yep, so, and she is a really nice dog. I, I love Thunder. Write that in your book. Yeah, I love Thunder, which is a muddy puppy, which is awesome. Um, I also love my Quest dog, but she's completely different than Muddy. Um, and she's not everyone's cup of tea because she's a kind of a kitty cat in the house. Meow. But I love her. And she Quiet also makes kitty. some nice puppies. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's answer some people's questions. Meow, meow. Tell the story, because now everyone needs to know the Quiet Kitty story. Oh, just Aiden likes attention. If we have to take a phone call, he says, Mommy, 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 which is a typical child thing to do. And so we've uh, talked about how he has to be quiet like a kitten. So now he says, meow, 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 meow. The entire time we're on the phone. So it's okay. better, but... Uh. All right, first question, we've got a super chat from Melanie Carlson. We appreciate super chats. As Duncan has his N.A. test this Saturday, forecast is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot. Any insider tips other than plenty of H2O to keep him cool? Wet towels on ice. Fun thing here, okay? So first of all, don't do that. Um, the biggest thing is going to be I would recommend that you fill your vehicle up before you get to the test and put a crate inside of it and run the vehicle the entire day. Now, don't put it on ice box, but don't put max it on AC it. Nah, but put it on, make sure it's cool. And that's going to be the biggest thing to help when you get them out water on them, not in them. If you just waterlog them, it's going to perfect, uh, it's going to effect overall performance for the day they're gonna feel like you think about chugging a gallon of water and you're like all sloshy in your stomach and you're like oh i'm gonna puke no good yeah that's drink what the some water feel like. absolutely but make sure there's plenty of water on their ears on their coat keep them wet through the field portion in the track don't stand outside for 30 minutes beforehand you'll see lots of dogs on stakeouts and tieouts by their trucks and getting hot all day long don't do that Put your dog in your box, put the box inside your vehicle, keep the vehicle at a reasonable temperature, not ice box. That's too big of a shock, but And cool. they typically run the field portion first, 
when it's going to be hot like that. So hopefully they get in and out of the field prior to the ultimate 90 degree heat of the day. A lot of these testing places will also have water tubs in the field. So Keep going them in that water. Yep. Go to the water, get your puppy in it, wet them down, just like we were talking about with a water bottle. But bring water bottles to the field, too. Uh, because sometimes the tests don't have water or your dog gets too weirded out by the water tub and you still need to be able to get them, you know, cooled down. Uh, Then they typically will do the tracking and then the water portion last. So that's usually the order. Sometimes it has to be adjusted and that's up to the discretion of the judges. But those are things to keep in mind. And then I wanted, it's not about heat. That's not what I wanted to mention, but it kind of goes hand in hand with what Ethan was talking about with keeping your dog, you know, kind of in a crate, not out on a stakeout, not on, out on lead all day long. This is a big day Huge for these deal. puppies. Mentally, they get very exhausted. They have to focus for a long amount of time. They have to perform well. And they're doing it all in new environments around all the excitement of other dogs and other people. So try and keep them as calm and rested as you can not out barking their heads off on a stakeout all day long because come time to focus for their track they are going to be minds blown um so keeping them not out there meeting every single person that walks by them you know that can happen after the test but during the test let's try and stay as calm and collected and focused and mentally prepared for the rest of the day as we can Making notes, I saw a note in here that reminded me that I thought it would be a great thing to find a quality water bottle that works and then get information on them that says better on them than in them. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> and then uh, it'd say something like... And then put them on the store, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, just provide them at reasonable price for folks. A quality product at a reasonable price. That standing stone supply. Yeah. Um, T-shirts are getting printed right now. Sorry. I'm trying to scroll through. We got all the check-ins, and then I was trying to see a couple more questions here, even though they're not super chats. We like to answer your questions either way, but I got to get through all your guys' check-ins again here. Uh, I saw a question that said... Oh, here, this was one that I saw. Absolutely. It says, have you ever heard that GSP dogs tend to have lupus? So breeders should test for it as pups uh, as pups before selling and provide documentation. Okay, so in 13 years with short hairs, I've never seen a single dog with lupus. I do know that it does exist according to the world, and I'm sure that people have dealt with it firsthand, um, but I've worked with a lot of dogs, never seen a single case. What we try and follow is OFA's chick certification. Um, We've utilized a slightly more minimal approach to testing because, again, all of the things that I'm testing for, we've never seen out of a single dog that we own, which just goes to show how healthy the short hair breed is. But to be as ethical and stay on top of things as we can, we're testing everybody so that they'll be chick certified, which uh, if you want to look that up, CHIC um, and then you can find your individual breed and what their recommendations are as far as most common genetic disorders that are testable. These are all the breeds. These are the breeds. I'm trying to find mm-hmm. another good question. How did we meet? We met rendezvousing, reenacting things from the 1800s time frame. I think we've talked about that in another Yawa or two or three or four. Camping in the summer as just kids. I was 20 years old when we got married. Oh, I was like, when we met, I was like, you were not that old when we met. No, I was 17. Um... I need a bourbon, blade and bow. I have a bottle downstairs. I could ship it to you, but that's illegal. <laughs> um, best travel crate to bring a puppy home in. So, puppy Mr. crate. Mr. Potato. No, that's flying. Sorry. Weren't they? And that's Mr. Mr. Peanuts. Peanuts. <laughs> Mr. Peanuts. Pe- peanuts. 
On a plane. Oh, he did say on a plane. Yes. Oh, I didn't see that part. Yes, Mr. Peanut Brand Puppy Crates. Uh, I think we might even have them on our recommended items page, or we used to Uh, on our website. Might add them to our website. I don't. I think it's recommended items. If I can find a quality one that works, um, we'll get them. We'll get them in there. Uh, but we did have one in one of our YouTube videos on how to fly with a puppy. So I don't know if you've seen that video. It's worth taking a look at. It gives some information. Keep in mind, it was when we picked up Clutch so a couple years ago. And things, regulations do change. So be sure to talk to your airline prior to getting to the airport with your puppy and make sure that you've met all the requirements that you need. This is an interesting one. It says, do you feel that selective exposure benefits training dogs who are in a kennel most of the time and come out to train versus free roam all day with family? Yeah, I think this is a huge thing. And uh, what I want to say about it specifically is I believe both are beneficial. I think being part of the family and getting some free roaming time and that kind of stuff is huge. But I also put every single one of my dogs who we raise in the house in the kennel like a dog that's in for training when they start their puppy stuff um but they hit that six plus month old they go to the kennel they start working because that environment teaches them a lot as well both are beneficial both add to overall socialization ability to adjust and well-roundedness as a dog now but i also think that the dogs that you know we crate and then bring out for specific train time those are the dogs that um can focus for those training sessions they're not tuckered out from screwing off in the backyard or the living room all day long uh they are 100 percent ready to work when it's time to work and that is the kind of drive and desire that we're looking for and we're able to accomplish more um, in those training sessions with them as well so Trix moved out to the kennel for a while during some of that training uh, so that she's, as well as it allows us to be like, hey, we need to put you on our training string and not wait until, you know, Quest and a year old and hasn't even been woe trained. I did that. Um, This is a good one. Yeah. No comment from Ethan. Uh, I'm fixing those things now. So (laughs) we don't talk about this. Okay. We'll talk about it just a little bit. I said that we were working quest today actually who i am now training so that we can get somewhere with her and uh she said uh well thanks for the super chat michael cole i was honestly i had my little cursor highlighted on your question and that's where we were headed next um but uh i was talking to jess i said if you want to see a dog that is behind schedule at our program just to see which one's cat claims as hers And those are usually the ones. And keep in mind that I have been pregnant for nine months. I. Twice while we had Quest. So. Thank you, honey. I uh, could not have done that. And I 1,000% appreciate the beautiful boys that you created for me. You're welcome. And I 100% appreciate you taking the time to work with my dogs. They're cute, and they're very much like cats. I love it. (laughs) So, uh, Michael Cole said, have you talked about torn ACLs? Thank you. I'm in the process of talking to the king of torn ACLs, okay? It is actually the gentleman that does a majority of the trainings on how to do TPLO surgeries within the United States. I got the opportunity to hunt with him in Texas, Great guy. We didn't kill a lot of birds because we didn't see a lot of birds on that trip. Just happened to be a bad weather swing where it got really hot right before we got there and then while I was there. So the birds are in the shade. And if you've ever been to South Texas, there are some cleared out areas and then there are some not cleared out areas. And the not cleared out areas are shaded. So that's where the birds hang out. And we could kind of catch them along the edges in the morning and then that was about it. But As far as the ACLs go, there's a lot of different research that talks uh, uh, specifically about early spays and neuters aiding toward that, as well as um, on average with a dog. It's not necessarily a uh, specific trauma event as much as it is a wear-related issue. And the wear-related issues are the worst of the two because of the fact that it's 
it's a, it essentially at that point would be a genetic thing. The dog is predisposed to eventually wear out their ACLs, wherein people, on average, you step off a curve and there goes your ACL, or you do something else like that. It's a trauma-related thing most of the time. Now, there may be a predisposition. I don't know that, but on average, person just walking every day doesn't tear their ACL. It happens from some random thing. Um, where with dogs, it is a wear related thing on average. So I am trying to get a hold of the good doc that does all of the stuff on here, have him as a guest in a podcast so that we can specifically talk about that. It's in the future, I'm trying to get a hold of him, trying to get on his schedule. He's a busy mofo. So we will see, maybe I can pin him down in a quail hunt or something like that. Um, but ultimately it happens with dogs. I will also say that I think that a lot of dogs have strain related injuries, which a lot of times do end up being more of a, um, trauma thing, trauma related thing. And then it is coined as this is a torn ACL and we need to do surgery on it. I have had because two we, dogs, sorry, I've had two dogs that had been diagnosed with torn ACLs needed to be repaired surgically. I rested them for, count them, six months, and ipso facto... Never had a problem No, no had a, no, no more problems ever again. Now, I'm not saying that's the case with all dogs. There are definitely dogs that tear them, but the only way that you're truly going to be able to tell that is through an MRI. Yeah, um, most vets, that's what I was going to say, aren't going to be able to tell just from an exam, especially if the dog is awake during that exam because the dog is going to be resisting and fighting and strengthening their muscles while you're trying to do that, you know, manipulation. And um, as our dogs are very tough as well. So showing, you know, ouch, that hurt isn't the same for, for them, tough, for yeah. other dogs. I love Quest, FGR says. I love Quest. We all love Quest. Quest is amazing. Quest is just her dog, so I have to give her shit. Um, Pack Mule and Beat says, is swimming as good for as roading work to keep your dogs in shape? And Jason DeCox said, swimming doesn't toughen up their pads, but is good exercise. Y'all are said on it top better of myself. it. We love you. It is What do been you even need us for? I'm out of bourbon. I'm not out of beer, but well, you might close as well enough. be. We're out of time, folks, for this evening. We appreciate you. We will stay in touch. Please, if you don't already follow us on social media, do so. And then check in there. The other way that you can do it is if you go to our channel to playlists and click on the Yawa playlist. I'm going to schedule that out for the next. We're going to look at the schedule. We're going to try and do around the first Wednesday of the month. There will be some variants in that, but we'll put them in there, scheduled out. We're going to try and stay three to four weeks out on scheduling them. So you will be able to say, huzzah, I know when it is. I can put it on my calendar and see if I can actually make that work. We will be doing giveaways. We will be answering questions. We will be drinking bourbon, and drinking beer. beers. Um, wines and whatever else fancies our schmancies and we will be here to chat with you all. Thank you guys and we will see you soon. That's yeah. not how we ever end any Well, we of can't these. say we'll see you next week because we won't. I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Cat the dog trainer. We'll see you in the next video. There. There you go.